everybody, it's Stacy Hawkins from StacyHawkins.com. First and foremost, my sincerest apologies for running a little late tonight. Actually, I'm gonna flip this over a little bit here. My sincerest apologies for running a little bit late tonight. I ran into that typical life stuff that happens, and long story short, um, some of you might have seen, I posted on my Facebook page a while ago that um, Jackie and I were in the car and got rear-ended by a Verizon truck. Well, my car has been in the shop all week this week, and um, of course it was ready tonight, and by the time I finally got a ride to get there, then the car was late, and I'm looking at the clock going, I gotta go, but my ride had already left and I was stranded there. So you know how it goes. I mean, this is life, it's reality and things happen. But the good news is I am lean and green tonight regardless because I made, oh, I moved it. <laughs> all the dishes to the side but you can see my dirty dishes in the sink I knew that today was gonna be a busy day so I threw um, a pork loin in the um, in the crock pot so dinner is ready tonight um, and it's things like that that allow us to plan ahead and much like we've been talking about all of these weeks with how do we stay on track? How do we stay on program? And as JC talks about, not just program with food, but program in our lives, right? How do we look at things for the long haul? How do we continue to, um, to keep looking forward and hitting goals and making those milestones? It's through the planning, planning, planning. Now, as I am sharing with you tonight, even sometimes the best played plans, like me getting on here in time can go by the wayside, but my food plans did not go away. And I have to tell you that, um, again, so many people have commented and I'm so thrilled because um, you know I know I can see just in my own videos how much my, my own physique is changing by sticking on program and staying on plan. It's like, oh look, I only have one chin anymore. It's like, woohoo, I'm loving this. Um, and of course, eating lean and green is the reason that that is happening. It's allowing me to stay on program. It's allowing me to love what I'm eating and everything is really fantastic, right? So talking about lean and green tonight, we think of lean proteins, green veggies, right? And of course we think of chicken, we think of salad, we think of all of those other kinds of things that we might love or we might not love, right? So um, I want to talk about salad because, you know, we're coming into a warmer time of year. Salads are a big part of of, um, a lean and green meal because you can get a good size volume in there they're yummy they're delicious and it's not iceberg lettuce anymore so starting right at the top what I'd like to do tonight is I would like to take just a few minutes to go over greens add-ins and then how to dress them up and as you saw in the picture that was the title of tonight it's like how to dress things up in order to be able to make those salads taste great and if you've heard me talk before or you've heard me um, do one of my presentations or you've read my recipes you know that I absolutely positively abhor prepared salad dressings um, and that's because they've got so much garbage in them right when you read the back of a label which I really hope that a lot of you are really now paying attention to those labels when it comes to your lean and green foods but when you're reading those labels and looking for things like added sugar added chemicals anything that adds in or ends in OSE or even ASE sometimes can have um, you know sugar to it and those artificial sweeteners just stay 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 away from them it is that old adage of if you can't pronounce it you don't want to eat it so I want to talk to you tonight and give you the basic recipes or the basic combinations for putting together some great salads and then dressing them and the worksheet that I've created for you that I will get posted and if you you don't know where the worksheets are for all of the cooking videos that I've done they are up on top under the file button so click file and then you'll be able to see all of the recipes that are on there and then all of the downloads that you can print and as always I say if you'd like to share them with friends family if you're a coach and you have clients if you're just on program and you loved it and want to print it for your recipe book or share it with your mom you have my blessing to do so please by all means the more people we can help the better so what I'm putting in there uh, for you tonight is a worksheet that is a master salad chart. So you basically take something from column A, which is your greens, something from columns B and C, which are your add-ins, and then your dressing. And then the dressing itself, as I said, we're gonna go over the basic way to be able to make that. And that is on the Kitchen Basics recipe card, which comes with any of the Lean and Green cooking systems, as well as it's in the cookbook, and it's also all over my website, the stacyhawkins.com slash recipes website, so you can find it there too. So let's talk first about greens. So there are a number of different choices that you can make. And yes, believe it or not, some choices are much, much, much better.
better than others. And depending on the greens that you choose will determine the type of dressing that you put on it. For example, when you think about um, heartier, heavier lettuces or things like your kale, those are things that are gonna be able to hold a heavier dressing. And when you have lighter greens, like your mescaline greens or some of your baby greens, then you know they aren't gonna be able to handle a really heavy dressing. You need to have a little bit more of a lighter style vinaigrette on those. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do this evening. So let's talk about greens, as I said. We already talked about iceberg lettuce. Throw it out, right? Unless you wanna mix it with other greens because you like the crunch or you like the texture, just get rid of the iceberg lettuce. It is nutritionally void. There is nothing good. Yeah, thumbs up, right? There is nothing, nothing, nothing good about um, iceberg lettuce. If you like the crunch, if you like the texture, then next move to a romaine lettuce. That requires a little bit of work. Um, sometimes people like to take that heavy rib that's down the middle out and just use the leaves. Some people like the ribs in there. I, for one, happen to like them, and, and I think that's what really gives some texture and some flavor and some crunch to a salad um, that's not just light leafy greens is are those ribs that are in there. Uh, so romaine lettuce is really good and those are darker, a little bit greener and a little bit better for you. Then we start getting into kind of what I call the transitional greens. So these are all of your new baby greens that are out there. Allison, oh hey Allison, nice to see you. And by all means, Jackie's not here with me tonight, but um, I have the camera flipped around so I can see your comments on there. So feel free as we're going along. If you have comments or questions, throw them up there by all means. Um, so I was talking about the greens. We then go into the transitional greens. So these are things like your, your mescaline salad, which are um, darker and leafier. They usually have things in them like baby spinach and baby arugula, baby romaine, which can be purple and green. Um, sometimes they'll also put beet or turnip greens in there and then um, your kale as well. Um, and so those are those are really, really good as salads. Um, again, especially if you have like the beet or the turnip greens in there or the mustard greens, a lot of great flavor, a lot of great texture, and you're also gonna get a lot of color in there. So imagine a bowl of that mescaline salad versus the, um, the even the romaine salad by itself or the iceberg lettuce, right? Huge, 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 huge difference. Um, and don't forget too that if you like crunch and texture, you can put a little raw cabbage that's sliced up in there as well but I digress so um, we go from the, the plain lettuces to something that's a little bit more souped up and then there are the super power mixes I, I'm making you hungry I know I'm getting hungry too <laughs> um, we go then next to what we call the super power mixes and now the grocery stores and especially the healthier food stores and believe it or not even at the restaurant supply place I've found now what they call um, organic power mixes and these are things that are really robust in fact let me I'm gonna grab mine out of the fridge here here. bear with me one second and I'll show you I get this from the restaurant supply so it's really really big but um, I'll eat all this in a week and in here there are I don't have my glasses but I want to read off to you what's in here because this stuff is awesome right it has dandelion greens it's got baby kale baby spinach it's also got arugula it's got broccoli rob baby broccoli rob in it and what else is in there? Oh, spinach, right? So this is really fantastic. Yeah, lots of thumbs up, right? So this is really powerful, antioxidant rich, and really yummy. Now again, it's lettuce and you only get so much of it as a green, so why not get the best of the best, right? So go out there and look for these mixes and I promise you that your taste buds are going to thank you. Now let's talk about the things you can combine them with. If you're just going for your greens, right, and you only want a green because you have a lean already prepared, so this is going to be a side dish for you, then of course you're just going to stick with vegetables. And um, you know, Metafast and TSFL um, have great worksheets that are on their websites and if you don't have one already, check with your health coach because your health coach will be able to get that worksheet for you to tell you what kind of vegetables you can add in here so as you're adding the veggies what I want you to think about are things that are in season because you know like right now um, in the winter time you don't want to be throwing tomatoes on there unless they're the cherry tomatoes they're fresh from Florida and they're sweet and they're yummy right you don't want to put a big tomato on there that's partially green because it doesn't taste like anything so why waste the calories right 
put some English cucumbers on there and leave the skins on. Put some pepper on there. So, and I don't mean fresh cracked pepper, but I mean like your green pepper, your yellow pepper, your red pepper, smaller portions. Mix it up and throw it on top of your salad. Now I'll give you a quick tip, and this is something that I do all of the time, is, you know, salad is great, but it can also be a pain because there's a lot of prep work. So one day during the week, get yourself a big Tupperware container and just chop up all your vegetables. Chop Chop up all your peppers, chop up all your cucumbers, chop up your tomatoes if you want, and then just toss them together and then pre-measure out, you know, a half a cup or a cup, depending on how many greens you want to have or you're allotted that day, and put them right on top of your salad. So it makes it that easy. And great idea. I'm glad you like that. That actually, it just makes it so much easier. You prep once and you can eat it all week. And as long as you keep it cold in the fridge, it'll last for you. So there's no excuses, right? And we're all about easy and we're all about meal prep. And then if you do decide that you want to turn this into your lean and green meal, then you're going to put some sliced steak on top of it or some grilled chicken. And again, these are things that you can make ahead of time during the week and just eat them chilled. Um, grilled shrimp is another great thing to be able to put on there. Or if you have the bag of frozen pre-cooked baby shrimp that's in your freezer, just thaw them out. All they need is a little cup of hot water. You come home from work, you throw them in a bowl, throw some warm water on them, go change your clothes. By the time you come downstairs, it's done. Throw your salad together and you're all set. So you've got your lean, you've got your green, you've got your protein. Perfect. I'm got, is that, oh, hi. It's nice to see you. Is that Anna? Anne. Hi, Anne. Um, uh, so you've got everything kind of all set and ready to go. So now once you have your salad prepped, let's talk about the dressing, right? Because this is the piece de la resistance that brings everything together. And as I said to you, please, 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 please stay away from prepared salad dressings because they are just full of garbage. And oh, I'm looking here. What is Allison saying? I have to put my glasses on. If I cook meat ahead of time, how long is it fresh for? That is a great question. I wish these things were a little bit bigger or maybe I wasn't so old and blind. <laughs> but um, that's a great question. So usually once you cook it and keep it in the refrigerator, it's good for three or four days. Um, so what I'll do with uh, my steak is like, just last night I grilled a big London broil. We cut up half of it for dinner last night and I actually have just been slicing pieces off of it um, off the hunk that I didn't slice so that I could eat it for um, my leans for uh, during the day because I'm doing three and one, not five and one right now. So my lunch today, I sliced off some of that. And um, if you can leave the meat in a hunk and slice as you go, it's better than slicing it up first. So you're very welcome for that. All right. Oh, um... Yes, stay away from pre-made dressings. Absolutely, stay away from them. Um, and I'm gonna show you now, and I'll flip the camera down here in a second, how you can make a homemade dressing. And I'm gonna put the recipe up for you, but it's really, 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 really easy. It's two parts oil to one part vinegar. And then you need a little bit of something to bind it together, which um, usually classic salad dressings either use a mustard or an egg yolk. We're going to stay away from raw eggs for lots of different reasons, um, but those that's classic preparation, so I want you to have that education, and we're going to go with mustard instead. And then you want to add some seasoning. So typical classic is salt and pepper. So like a real basic, yummy, delicious vinaigrette would be olive oil, some type of vinegar, a little bit of Dijon mustard and salt and pepper. And again, it's two to one on your oil to vinegar. And then your little bit of squirt of your mustard and a little bit of salt and pepper. Whisk it together and away you go. Um, now you can mix and match these up in a bunch of different ways. Let me just take a look here. Two part of oil, one part of vinegar, mustard to bind it together, exactly. But you also wanna put some seasoning in there. So you need a little salt and pepper or you need a little something else, but it's really, 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 really easy. Now I will tell you because we're on program and because you are watching your healthy fats, what you can do is you can do one part oil to one part vinegar so that you keep your healthy fats down. And if it's a little too thick or you don't have quite enough, you can add a little bit of water. I promise you, you won't, you won't miss it. And if you want a completely fat-free salad dressing, which I have done, um, as a matter of fact, hold on, because I have one in the fridge. I use my good old old seasons container. You can see this is really runny. I'm going to hold it up here so you can look at it quickly. But you see those big chunks in there? What I did with this is I used two parts of chicken broth, 
with one part of vinegar and then mustard and seasoning. So you can do a fat-free version this way as well. And I will also tell you that this combination makes an awesome, awesome marinade. So you could put some of this in a zipper bag with your chicken and leave it for the day and then grill it and mwah, yummy, yummy, yummy. Okay, hold on, I see another comment here. Oh, awesome, yes, salt, salt and pepper. What, what is it? What, what was the commercial they just did with the lawnmower? Push it real good, right? So make your own salad dressing. <laughs> We're gonna push it. All right, so you got me way off topic here. <laughs> um, so now the fun thing is, once you have those basic ratios down pat, you can mix them up in a bunch of different ways depending on flavors. And this is where the magic of Stacey Hawkins comes in. Yeah, thanks, I'm glad. I hope you were cha-cha in there with me, Allison. So um, this is where the, really the magic of, of what I do comes into play. Because let's start first with column A, which is your oil, right? You could use a regular old olive oil, or then you could go to a flavored oil. So you could use, I've got the roasted garlic oil, you could use the lemon oil or you could use the orange oil. And then you take a look at your vinegars and there's so many different kinds of vinegars that are out there. But again, you wanna watch because some of them have added sugars. So you can add a traditional balsamic. You could add my balsamic mostacado, which is a little on the sweeter side. You could use rice wine vinegar. You can use apple cider vinegar. You can use champagne vinegar, tarragon vinegar, any of those. And then you go to your mustards. So again, you have to be careful that your mustards don't have um, extra extra sugar in them. Um, so you can use like a Dijon mustard or the whole grain. I want to show you this one too. I'm so glad I have my refrigerator right here. This makes it very convenient. Like take a look at this one, right? Look at the, the grains that are in there. Um, this is really fantastic in a salad dressing because it's got a little pop, almost like a caviar to it and a lot of great flavor to it. So you can whisk that in. And then last but not least, you've got your um, seasoning. So again, you can go with straight up salt and pepper or you can put together um, you know, any one of the Stacey Hawkins seasonings. So one of my favorite dressings ever, ever, ever is orange oil, balsamic mostacado, rice wine vinegar, and toasted sesame ginger with a teeny tiny bit of wasabi paste, right? So again, wasabi paste is also, it's a mustard. Whisk it together and it makes this awesome, awesome Asian style dressing. So I am actually gonna demo one of these for you right now so you can see how quick and how easy it is. Let me move my greens out of the way. And I just threw a bunch of stuff on the counter here so that you can see. Um, and I'm gonna move this down and cut myself out of the picture here. Oops, hold on one second. Let me tighten this up so it doesn't go anywhere. All right, there we go. And I just need to grab the seasoning. I'll grab the first one I have here. Which is, oh, lucky me, the dash of desperation. All right, so here we go. And I'm gonna move this into the camera so that you can see. Um, and I'm just gonna pour. I'm gonna start with luscious lemon oil. So let's say we're gonna do this for um, you know two servings. I'll put in one, probably two teaspoons. So we'll do one healthy fat. I'm gonna add a little bit of balsamic mostacado, and this is much thicker and richer than a traditional balsamic vinegar, so you're gonna see how thick this makes things. And let me tip this up here. Actually, I'm gonna move the camera. Can you see how the oil and the balsamic just sort of sit together and the oil ring is just a little bit bigger than the balsamic ring. I'm gonna leave this like this so that you can see it. To that, I'm gonna add, let's see, we'll do some just regular old squeezy Dijon mustard here, little squirt. And then I will add some of the dash of desperation, which is like your salt, pepper, onion, garlic. So we have a lemon, balsamic, Dijon, and then salt and pepper. One, two, three. Whisk it together and boom, you are done. Now I want you to see like how thick that is. You see how it really kind of just clings to the bowl there? Um, that is key to, mm, oh, yummy, 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 a good dressing. Now what we're gonna do, and believe it or not, this is the proper way to make a salad. I'll throw in my greens. And then you pull the dressing up through the green, just like you see here. You see what I'm doing? I'm kind of mopping it up from the bottom. 
This is the proper way to dress a salad. And that is just pulling it up and through. What you don't want to do is dump that dressing on top of the greens because that's going to do nothing but weigh them down. And there we go. Perfectly dressed salad. And I wish, I know I always say this, I'm going to turn this back up. I wish you could smell this because the lemon and the garlic and the balsamic all together, it's like mwah, really, really quick and really, really easy. So, um, that's it. It does not have to be complicated and it certainly doesn't have to be expensive and you can make it as you go. Wait a minute. What did I do with my glasses? I think Allison posted a question. There they are. Wow, I always did salad and then dressing. Yeah, you know, everybody does that because that's what we think what we're supposed to do. But when you think about it, here you're taking this heavy dressing and dumping it on top of these delicate greens and it just kind of weighs them down. Um, and it also puts all the dressing like in one spot. So this way, when you use a nice, and you see how big this bowl is that I used, right? So you're gonna use a nice big salad bowl, whisk it and smear it along the bottom, and then just toss the greens in it. And you can use your hands too, you don't have to use the tongs like I did, but you wanna lift it up and through so that it coats all of those, um, all of those, uh, Greens, yeah, I'm losing my train of thought. All those greens really nice and easily. And then if you wanted to put your veggies on top of this, you could. If you wanted to toss them in with the dressing, put your greens in. Actually, no, you put your veggies in first and then your greens because your veggies are gonna be heavier. So again, you can pull them all up and through and just toss it together. Quick, easy, simple, you make the salad dressing as you go, or if you want to, you can make a bottle of it ahead of time. In fact, like I said, I have my good season shaker here. Um, this is actually a dressing I made last night, and I just reused a jar that I had. This one has some, um, what do we do with this one? This is um, actually leftover olive oil from a container of um, poppers that I bought, the big stuffed cherry peppers. So I took that oil, because it's nice and piquant and it's got a little heat to it. I added some of the garlic and spring onion seasoning and I did the chunky mustard in this one. Um, and so I had the oil and apple cider vinegar. So, you know, I have bottles like this all the time in my, um, in my refrigerator and just boom, away you go. So. You do the same thing though. Take your big bowl, pour the dressing in the bottom of the bowl, then put your stuff in and toss it through. And if you wanna put your meat in there too, you can. It's real simple, it's really easy, and salad greens do not have to be boring. They can be absolutely positively delicious and you don't have to feel like you're just eating chicken and salad again. So with that, do we have any other questions? Oh, you want to be a dinner guest? I would love to have that. So I'm, we we're talking about maybe having some guest chefs. So that would be great to have somebody else in the kitchen. And Eileen, thank you so much for your compliment. Um, uh, there's actually a blog post about my kitchen transformation. I bought this house about three years ago and it was a contractor special kitchen. And believe it or not, for a very low budget, I transformed it to what you see here and there's a, a blog post on stacyhawkins.com and if you click on blogs you'll see it up there. It's about the kitchen transformation and how easy it can be. All right, uh, amazing, can't wait to try. Those are exactly the comments that we like to hear. So, and know that I am here for you. There's so many more resources beyond what I share with you once a week. You can follow me on Facebook at thestacyhawkins.com on Facebook, the Stacy Hawkins, or just click on my little button there. Um, definitely get the worksheet that's up above. Feel free to check out the recipes on the stacyhawkins.com website. Everything there is lean and green and dedicated and devoted to everyone who is on program and wants to eat great, lose weight, and keep it off forever. So if we're not friends, friend me now. If you don't have the newsletter, sign up for it, and I am here to help you. Oh wait, do I see one more question? Ha ha. Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna see what she says, this is so bad. Oh, you wanna have me for dinner? Yes, Allison, that's great. Where do you live? Do I get to take a road trip? <laughs> I would love, love, love to be able to see you guys, but we'd love to have you here too. So, all right, I've gone over my time tonight. Thanks again for your patience with me, and I will see you guys next week here at 7 p.m. Have a great night, everybody.